Hi, welcome to um, another lesson in the SWV modules on our programming. In this lesson, we're going to cover working with dates and times in R using the Lubridate package. So I am Jason Graham. I'm a professor in the mathematics department at the University of Scranton in Northeast Pennsylvania in the United States. And I'm going to um, kind of present some of the main concepts behind the Lubridate package. <clears throat> so in this lesson, we're going to cover concepts surrounding the fact that often data sets contain um, data that are associated with either dates or times. And there's some specific challenges that come up frequently in um, relation to working with such data. By the end of the lesson, you should have some sort of idea about how to facilitate this in R, in particular using the Lubridate package. So I'm going to start by kind of motivating uh, the Lubridate package and working with date time data show you how this can be a little bit of a challenge in spreadsheet style uh, software like Excel and explain the basic functions from Lubridate and show you some what I hope will be interesting use case examples. So the first thing to sort of realize is that data comes in a variety, variety of different types. Things things that we measure quantitative, numerical quantities, measurements of length, height, things like this are represented by decimal numbers. And um, this gets encoded in R by a class or type called numeric. There's also count data, so whole number integers, uh, which are also numeric, although you can make a subtle distinction between the two in R. But for our purposes, we can both treat decimal numbers and whole numbers as numeric. And then there are categorical variables in our data classifications, like say, um, we want to record the color of, uh, a, of a set of different vehicles. So maybe white, so maybe black, so maybe blue. These are categorical variables, and these are represented in R using um, characters. <clears throat> so here's an example in R. I create um, this data called numeric underscore values, which is just um, a, a ve vector with the numbers 1.2, 6.5, and 8.1. I can ask R to tell me the class of that uh, data, and it says numeric as we stated it would. Alternatively, I can create a character vector that contains dog, cat, and bird. As for the class, I get a uh, character <clears throat> as expected. So I think all this should be sort of familiar to you um, from your uh, previous lessons in R programming. When we store data sets in R, Usually that's done using either a data frame or a tibble. Tibble is the tidyverse uh, sort of uh, implementation of data frame that adds a few additional features. But for our purposes, we can consider them to be equivalent. The point is, is that um, a data frame is essentially like a spreadsheet. It has rows and columns. The rows correspond to observations and the columns correspond to the variables. The point is, is that all the data in a given column should be of the same type. Uh, so you can't mix types within a column. So <clears throat> as sort of examples, I'm going to use three different data sets as we go through this lesson. Uh, one is on restaurant and food services that I obtained from a website called Data USA, and I've stored this data in a .csv file called monthly employment, and uh, you'll, you'll have access to this CSV file, uh, or I can provide access to the CSV file through the GitHub repository. There's also an R&R packages download data set that records 
um, just the download information for different R packages. This is part of the Tidy Tuesday um, program uh, that does a lot of uh, interesting, makes available a lot of interesting data sets. And uh, the, you can click on the links to uh, see what that's all about. And there's a package called NYC Flights 13 that records a bunch of flights in and out of New York City and from 2013. And these all will give us good examples of kind of what, uh, how dates and times can show up in, in our data. So let's look at a couple of these data frames. I'm going to start with the food services data set. So this is a sort of um, uh, a, a, a snippet of that data set. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven columns and uh, a bunch of rows. I've only shown the first few rows. One thing to notice is, I mean, obviously this uh, data set contains information about dates. Uh, and it also happens to record information corresponding to dates in a few different ways. So the first call, the month of year ID, has seems anyway as if it has the year dash the month. The month of year obviously lists the month, comma, the year. There's some other information. And there is actually a date column. Okay. So um, what I want to do is to switch over to R. And actually take a take a glimpse of this uh, information uh, of this data set. So the first thing I'm going to do is load my packages. Um, load the data. And let's look at um, the food services data. So one way to do it to get basically an equivalent of what uh, was on the previous slide is to use the head command to look at the first few rows. So this essentially corresponds to the table that we already saw. Another way that I uh, kind of prefer often is to use instead the glimpse um, function, which is in a package that's part of the tidyverse. And uh, I can't remember exactly what package that is, but if you load tidyverse, you'll have access to the glimp command. The glimpse command, I'm sorry. So here is glimpse on food services. So this tells us how many rows and columns we had, seven columns we knew, a total of 161 rows, the names of the columns. And what's interesting is the type or class for each of the columns. So as is, R is interpreting month of year ID as just a bunch of characters. Same thing with month of year. It's just a bunch of characters. Now we know that these things actually correspond to dates, but as is, R does not. However, if we look at the actual date column, R does actually recognize that these things correspond to dates and it gives it a special class called date. So that's really nice. Okay, keep that in mind. Let's go back. And look at the R packages download data. <clears throat> okay, I seem to have a date, uh, a time, in fact. So this would be the date of this specific download of some R packages the exact time at which that happens, and some inf additional information. So if you had to guess, what types within R do you think this date column in the data frame and this time column in the data frame are going to be? So take a second to think about that. Let's actually go to R. 
and see. So I've already loaded the data. I'll just call a glimpse date. It sees as there's a date, just like we had with the date column in the food services data. It also recognizes the time as a special class uh, called time. So we won't work a ton with the time type data. Um, Luberdate has some facility to do that, but there's actually another package called HMS that uh, does a little bit better job of allowing us to work with time data. So we're really just going to focus on date data for the uh, this lecture. I just want to make you aware that that is um, an, an option. So we'll go back to the slides and continue um, from there. All right, so we have seen that um, data, that is columns in a data frame can have uh, types that correspond to dates and times. When you import a data set into R, one way to see this is to use the glimpse command the output will show you that some columns have dates or times. Again, it may be the case that even though there is a column that corresponds to information that we know should correspond to a date or a time, it may or may not get um, appropriately interpreted by R in, in that way. So that's something we'll come back and discuss in a second. One of the ways in which this happens is that different people can um, record dates and times in, in different ways. So we know, for example, that February 14th, comma, 2022, 02-14-2022, 22-02-14, 14-feb.20-2022 all correspond to the same exact day. The thing is, is that um, these could get recorded differently across either different columns or different rows of, of a data frame. And so we need ways to handle this. Uh, and it's nice to have ways to handle this programmatically, as we'll see <laughs> soon enough. So I want to kind of show you uh, through a sort of, sort of simple example what it's like to do something with dates in Excel versus what it's like to do something with dates in R using the Luberdate package. And then later on, I'll explain more about how Luberdate and its functions uh, actually work. So if the code, the R code I show you in a moment doesn't make perfect sense, don't worry about that. We'll come back to that and, um, and cover more. So I'm going to start with some data in Excel. This is the um, monthly employment data, the, that is the food services data that we've already looked at. So it has the month of year ID column, the month of year, super sector ID, and all this additional stuff, this date. Uh, so what we're concerned with or interested in for the moment is uh, sort of these three columns that we know correspond to, to date data. So let's make this a little bit bigger so we see what we're looking at. <clears throat> so the first thing I'm going to do is make a copy uh, so I can work with a copy instead of the original data. So here's our copy. We can see that these two first two columns correspond to the same type of information. So I'm just going to get rid of this uh, first column. And what my goal is, is to convert this column, this first column, to data that Excel interprets as being a date. So currently, Excel does interpret this column as being a date. But it doesn't interpret this as being a date. The reason or the way that I know that is because in this first column, all the information is left justified. So everything is lined up along the left hand side of the column, whereas in this case, everything's right justified lined up on the 
in, along the right hand side of the date column. So what I'll do uh, is first start by splitting uh, this month of year into two different columns, one that contains the name of the month, the other another that contains the um, value for the the year. So the way to do this is to use this text to columns option. I'm going to use the delimited option because I do have a delimiter in that column, specifically the column. I'm going to use both the comma and the space to separate this. This gives us an idea of what's going to happen. Now it's going to split the first row into three columns, month of year, and that's because of the space. Um, and that's fine. We'll, we'll start with that and then go back and just replace of with year. And we'll keep it as a general. And there we go. So um, we accidentally deleted one of our columns, but that's fine. Um, we can, uh, uh, we're not going to work with that column anyway, so that's fine. Um, so what I'll do is get rid of that, change this to year. Okay, and I'm going to convert this to a table to make it a little bit easier. Oh, whoops, made a mistake there. There we go. So now I have a table. What I'm going to do now is combine the January 2008, February 2008, etc., into this new column such that Excel actually recognizes it as a date. So the way to do this is to use the concatenate function. And by month. Separate by uh, slash year. Now, this alone is not going to get me a numerical value. But if I multiply by one, it will. So here's the result. So now these are numbers. Okay. And it turns out they actually correspond to dates which we can recognize if we just format the cell as a date. So that's what it took to get in Excel to combine these two columns into something, well, to convert the original month year column into um, what essentially will what does in fact correspond to an actual date in Excel. First I had to split it apart and then I had to get recombine, multiply by one to get a number and then finally get a date. It defaulted the month, no sorry, the day of each month to uh, Uh, to the first, <clears throat> but it correctly uh, captured the, the month. And if we compare across here, we see that we get basically the same thing as we already had in the date column. Okay. What is it like to do the same exact thing with R using Lubridate? That's what I'm going to show you right now. So from last time, we've already loaded this data. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add a new column that I call month year. Let's call it month year date to be consistent with what I did in Excel. And all I'm going to do is apply to that column, which let's remind ourselves what's in the food services data. 
we have the month of year ID. That's the column that we removed in Excel. Here we don't have to remove it, but we could if we wanted to. Um, we get the month of year. That's what we're interested to convert into an actual date. So I'm going to apply the MDY month day year function from Lubridate. Let's make this clear that we're using Lubridate. The month day year function from Lubridate applied to that column, and then I'll glimpse the result. This added a new column in the data frame called month year day that does in fact have a date data type and it gives us the um, uh, the correct year and month for each one. So the first one was January 2008. We have 2008 01. We can forget about the year because we didn't have a year there. It just defaulted the year to, to something, um, but that's fine. Oh, sorry, the uh, the day. It defaulted the day to something, but that's fine. It doesn't matter. So that's the difference. I would argue that uh, the approach via Lubridate was much simpler than the approach using um, uh, Excel. Uh, I mean, once you have a ton of experience with Excel, I'm sure it's very quick to, to do what you want to do, but obviously, this can be put into a, a part of a program to automate something. Uh, doing automation in Excel is much more challenging. So we <clears throat> have introduced the idea of daytime data, seen how they can show up as columns in a data frame, seen how data that we know should correspond to dates uh, doesn't necessarily get um, appropriate, appropriately represented that way in a data frame in R or Excel for that matter. And we've seen what it's like to work with date time data in Excel and compared that with um, doing the same thing in R using the Lubridate package. So what I want to do is go through uh, more about the Lubridate package. So Lubridate is an R package uh, associated with the Tidyverse family of packages. So this is all the packages that are basically explained and utilized in the book R for Data Science. The one thing to note is Lubridate is not loaded when you load uh, Tidyverse. Loading tidyverse loads packages like ggplot, dplyr, et cetera, readr, and, and uh, quite a few others. <clears throat> but Lubridate isn't one of them. So you have to load Lubridate separately with the library Lubridate uh, command. So it is covered in R for Data Science in the chapter on dates and times. And what I want to do is illustrate some of the functionality of, of, of Lubridate that's covered in R for Data Science. So the first thing you can do is use it to parse um, strings that correspond to dates into dates in the sense that uh, they're, they actually get represented in R as a date <coughs> data type. So the most common functions, and one actually that you saw that I used when I compared the difference between working with dates in Excel versus R, are the YMD, YDM, et cetera, functions. So these are all functions that will take in a string that corresponds to a date in the form of some combination of a year, month, and day, and it will return it in a, in a common, consistent form. So you see, for example, I have a character a string in R that's 2022-03-06, which we interpret as being the year, month, and day for some date. I use the YMD function, and it returns the, the sort of right thing. Alternatively, I could say March 6th, comma 2022 as a string and put that into 
mdy for month day year and i get the same thing that i did before so there's quite a few different ways in which you can apply any of these functions to parse a string or character into a, a date <clears throat> There are also extensions of this that uh, account for time as well. So we just add on an underscore hour, minutes, seconds, or hour, minutes, et cetera, depending on um, you know, how, how the, the, the data um, is sort of read into our, or, or sorry, I should say how your data is recorded in like a CSV file or something like this. <clears throat> So we can apply these types of functions to uh, columns of a, of a data frame or, or a tibble in, our, in order to manipulate uh, entire data sets that contain data corresponding to dates and times. So for example, this R command that I have here is going to take in the food services data, which we know has a dates column. And we can split that into the year, months, and days. So we can kind of separate uh, a date column into the separate components of that date if we wanted to. I'll show you in a second exactly what this command does. Uh, actually, I'll just show you right now. So a lot of these commands I've input, I've put into a, an R markdown file with. Um, uh, that's uh, accessible via the uh, a GitHub repository, which I can share with you. Um, so here is the glimpse of the food services data. We have all these columns. It's this date column that I'm interested in, which R does upon reading in the CSV file, recognize the date column as date data. Now I'm going to mutate apply the mutate com uh, command from dplyr to separate these out into its component parts, the year, month, and day. And here's what it looks like when I run that command. I get year, 2008, 2008, 2008, et cetera, corresponds to that. The month strips out the month part and the day strips out the day part. Now notice these are no longer recorded as a data type corresponding to a date or date time right but we know what they are so this makes it possible to say for example make plots if we just care about what happens across the year or separate things out group by month or something like this so we can now manipulate this data in ways that we uh, could potentially be interesting <clears throat> Okay, so <clears throat> this is sort of the, the most basic functionality of, of dplyr is to, uh, sorry, of Luberdate, I'm sorry, uh, to parse date time data, that is convert data that's not originally in the format of a date or something that R can interpret as a date to convert it to a date or to manipulate the components of um, a date <coughs> time data. You can kind of go the opposite direction. Suppose your data has a column corresponding to a year, a column corresponding to a day, a column corresponding to a month, and I want to combine that into a date. This make underscore date function will do that. So let me show you exactly what this does. Go back to our studio. Here is that command. I'm going to make into a date uh, data that I where I've described just as you would the, normally the year, month, and day. And it inputs, it outputs uh, a date type. In fact, we can confirm that if we do.
this command here. So it tells me that in fact I have uh, implemented a, a date. <clears throat> so one thing you might want to do is to uh, apply this to uh, an entire data frame. So in the NYC flights data, there's a bunch of information corresponding to um, the time and date of flights in and out of New York City. So this data records the year, the month, the day, the hour, minute for flights. I want to combine that into, say, for example, I wanted to combine that into a single date time column, selecting the component parts that I want to combine into a date and then mutating it using the make time, sorry, make underscore date time function from Luber date will do that. So here's the glimpse of that result. I combine these four, uh, five columns into one date time type uh, column. So we can compare this with the original data to see what the difference is. So here I have the year, the month, the day, uh, some other stuff. What else did I use? I used the hour and the minute. There's also this time hour, but notice this is different because this is only for each date, the time at the sort of top of the hour, if you will. What I'm doing is I'm actually combining this one, two, three, four, five columns into a new thing that isn't currently contained in the, the data set. So this illustrates some of the additional functionality of the base functions in um, uh, it, available using the Luber date package. So we've covered, you know, some of the most basic uh, functions that are in the Luber date package to facilitate <clears throat> parsing and manipulating date time data in R. Let's look at a few, I guess, just kind of examples um, that I've more or less cooked up, but hopefully they'll just give you some kind of feeling for <clears throat> ways in which you might be able to, to use <clears throat> the functions from uh, Luber date. So here I have, again, uh, our R Markdown notebook. <clears throat> and I want to look at some things, some questions about uh, the data for the NYC flights from the NYC flights 13 package, the flights data. So if you remember um, what this looks like, might need to rerun some. Uh, let me just make sure that I've loaded these packages. <clears throat> So if you remember, um, this is what's contained in the data. <clears throat> this is a bunch of information about flights in and out of New York City uh, in 2013. So we have year, month, day, departure time, scheduled departure time, stuff about delays, carriers, what airlines, and all this stuff. So here's a simple question. Is there a day of the week when there are more flights than others? So one way to examine this is to look at the number of flights per weekday. <clears throat> the way I'm going to use Luberdate is to combine the year, month, day, hour, minute columns into a date time column called flight time. And I'm going to use that to extract the actual days of the week using this wday function from Luber date. <clears throat> and I'm going to group by the weekday and then uh, summarize the results. So let me just add in, I guess, an extra step here to show you the data that I'm constructing using Luberdate from the flights
data set. So here's what I've obtained. This additional column for the weekday. <clears throat> Now, take that data, group it by weekday, and then summarize. <clears throat> so for the first day of the week, now I forget which day of the week that is, but for the first day of the week, um, there were 46,357 flights. On the second day of the week, across this is across all the different days and months and um uh, there were 50,690 so on and so on so we can see that it looks like most of the flights occurred on the second day of the week i think that's probably mondays but um, i don't remember for sure <laughs> okay so this is a way to combine a data analysis with the use of the Luberdate package, or an example, I should say. So this answers the question, um, but uh, as I stated, I forgot what day of the week, day one is, and so on. I can fix that by using the actual name of the weekday, um, which I do by simply adding these additional arguments to the uh, w day function that I used before. Label equals true changes it from one, two, three to seven to Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, so on. ABR equals false. Uh, declines the option to use the abbreviation. So instead of MON for Monday, I have Monday written out in full. So here's what that looks like. <clears throat> okay, so I was right. Sunday is day one of the week. Monday is day two and so on. So it appears from this data that there are, most of the flights are, are on Mondays. Okay. And of course, a plot is always better than a table of numbers. So I can do the same thing, making the plots. Notice that it keeps the ordering of my weekdays, which is nice. So it doesn't order the weekdays by alphabetically. It actually orders them according to what day of the week they correspond to. And again, we see <coughs> many more fights. Well. The largest number of flights occurs on Mondays. If you're interested in statistics, I could conduct a chi-squared test for significance to see if in my data, Monday is significantly, there are significantly more flights on Monday compared with other days. Well, I guess more exactly what I'm testing is to see if there really is a dis a difference in the a, a significant difference in the proportion of flights that come in and out of any given day. So what am I going to do in order to achieve this? The same thing as before. I construct my data, group by weekday, summarize, pull out this column, the column labeled in and apply my chi-squared test to that. So here's the result. I have um, <clears throat> a significant p-value in the, in the terminology of, of hypothesis testing. Um, so, so it does seem that uh, some days of the week have more flights than, than others, uh, and that that difference is significant. So I hope that this kind of indicates to some extent the kind of power and utility of using the Lubridate package. Um, for one, it facilitates working program programmatically with date time data, something that's challenging to do in Excel. Um, the functions are 
pretty flexible. And so I think ultimately you're just sort of limited by, you know, your, your creativity. Uh, there is a lot to Lubridate, just as there is a lot to um, many of the functions in the various tidyverse packages, but uh, just using them time and time again will, um, uh, I guess, be, you'll find to be fun, interesting, and you'll learn more and more <coughs> about um, how things work. So to wrap up, um, we've demonstrated Lure Date, working with daytime data. All the code and data for this lesson is available on this GitHub repository, which is linked in the slides. And the sort of big ideas that we've covered are dates and times and the way they're represented are specifically that R has types for data that corresponds to date and times. When you import data, say by reading in a CSV file or something, depending on how that data has been entered, it or may or may not recognize that it is date time data, but you can use Luber date in cases where R doesn't recognize this date time data to parse it into date time data. Finally, uh, we have additional functions from Luberdate that cooperate well with the other functions and packages uh, in the Tidyverse family to do data analyses, make plots, and so on and so on. So I hope that this has been instructive and useful. Um, feel free to contact me with any additional questions that you have, and thank you. <laughs>